forget jumping the shark. This movie jumps the crocodile. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today, we're gonna be continuing my 007 review series with the eighth James Bond film, 1973's Live and Let Die. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Live and Let Die stars Roger Moore, Yafit Kodo, and Jane Seymour and was directed by Guy Hamilton. It tells the story of James Bond, played by Roger Moore in his first outing as the character, as he investigates the murder of three spies, only to find himself tangled up in a web of gangsters, voodoo, and tarot. This really was an unstable time for the Bond franchise, wasn't it? Five years, three movies, and three different Bonds, two of which being brand new to the series. For some reason, though, the introduction of Roger Moore as Bond didn't feel quite as jarring as Lazenby's introduction only two films before. I think a big part of that simply comes down to mental preparation. The switch to Lazenby was the first Bond transition we had, so it felt really weird. But by the time Moore came on the scene, people had gotten more accustomed to swapping out Bond actors. That fact alone can't account for all of his success here, though. He had an inherent knack for playing this type of character, coming off of a seven-year run playing Simon Templar on the spy thriller show The Saint, and I think he slips into the role of Bond quite nicely. Objectively speaking, Live and Let Die probably has the best theme song of the bunch so far, but I think my nostalgic heart still remains slightly in favor of Goldfinger for that number one musical spot. But man, the musical interlude in this one is just so good. Definitely the most rockin' of the Bond themes. Would you believe that despite having heard the song since I was a little kid, it wasn't until I was 24 years old that I realized it was a Bond theme? Seems to be a sad trend for me. As far as the actual movie, the quick pacing of this film makes it feel like one of the most briskly moving Bonds yet. Unfortunately, as seems to be common with the franchise, there's a bit of a lull and around the midpoint that slows things down a tad too much. Luckily, some pretty crazy action sequences get things moving again, but story-wise at least, I still think I enjoy the first half of the movie more than the second half. Actually, I think that's been the case for me with nearly every single film in the franchise so far. Despite that shortcoming, the smuggling plot's actually pretty engaging, and I had a good time with this one even though it's the second smuggling-centric Bond we've had in a row. Keeping in line with the general franchise flux, this film is all over the place with regard to tone and genre. It's mostly an action film, but has dashes of espionage, crime thriller, black exploitation, and swamp exploitation thrown in for good measure, and frequently bounces back and forth between being semi-serious and absurdly comical. In addition to the genre and tonal roller coaster, this film takes us all over the place. London, New York City, New Orleans, and yet another Caribbean island, the third in eight movies. Mysticism, voodoo, tarot cards, it's all here, and yet somehow this movie never gets too wildly off track. Except maybe for Kanaga's exit from the film. That's easily in contention for one of the most ridiculous moments in the entire franchise. And what about Roger Moore as Bond? Once again, I like him. He doesn't bring the emotional depth to the role that Lazenby did, but instead seems to be slightly more in line with Connery's interpretation of the character. The charm's back, but in a much smoother and less aggressive way. He manages to still play the character as cool and sexy without the sleaziness that clung to Connery's bond at times. But probably Moore's greatest contribution to the character was his humor. Yeah, there were lots of quips and one-liners in the earlier films, but the delivery feels way more natural here and is a big improvement on the stiff attempts at humor that came before, which is definitely a good thing considering how silly this movie gets. 
For all of its silliness, there's a lot to like about Live and Let Die. Funeral parades, cigar parasailing, and a flying lesson that won't soon be forgotten. There's a surprisingly good extended boat chase, plenty of alligators and crocodiles, and of course, Money Penny's wonderful yet brief contribution. While the film doesn't quite get the franchise back on track, it's a pretty significant course correction and a big step in the right direction. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is Roger Moore as Bond. I know I said the same kind of thing for both Connery and Lazenby's first outings as Bond, but it's true. Moore's definitely a different Bond, but I think he brings a lot to the role and the film benefits as a result. Now, I'm not necessarily saying he's any better or worse than our two previous Bonds. He just excels at different aspects of the character. He brings a lot of humor and charm to the role and also does a pretty good job in an action sequence. The second pro is that this is an interesting movie. That might sound a bit simple or generic to put as a pro, but it's one of the things that always stands out to me about it. I mean, the story has a few inevitable dragging moments, but this movie just covers so much ground that it's almost impossible not to be sucked into it. The basic plot is pretty solid, and then all the silly weirdness really keeps you interested, because you have no idea what to expect next. On the con side, the biggest issue for me is just how all over the place this film is. You could take somebody who's never seen this movie before and show them random clips from this movie that are about 20 minutes apart from each other, and they'd probably guess that you were showing them a bunch of different movies. As fun and entertaining as it is, the movie is incredibly tonally inconsistent, and all the genre shifts don't quite work in a cohesive way. The second con has got to be the racial overtones. Quite a few of the early Bond films had issues with racial stereotypes, and while this one somehow doesn't feel quite as offensive as some of those, it's still a bit odd at points. There are definitely a lot of scenes that perpetuate some stereotypes, like all of the Harlem Jive stuff and the voodoo, but then on top of that, every single one of the bad guys is black. They're very competent and intelligent villains, and the movie really emphasizes that by counterbalancing them with the ridiculous buffoon of a racist southern sheriff, but it still all kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth. I'm gonna give Live and Let Die three and a half out of five paws. It's a little inconsistent and not quite peak level more Bond, but it's still a fun intro to our third Bond and an incredibly interesting watch. I would recommend Live and Let Die to Bond fans who want to see something a little different. Obviously, we've got Roger Moore as Bond here, which is definitely different, but that's not where the differences end. There's some diversity to the locations in this one, bouncing from Harlem to New Orleans to a tropical island, and even the general story and tonal approaches are a little different, but nothing so crazy that it's unrecognizable as Bond. And even if you don't really care too much about the franchise, this is still a solid movie for anyone looking for some decent and enjoyable 70s action. If you liked Live and Let Die, I would recommend the 10th Bond movie, The Spy Who Loved Me, for some more Roger Moore-led globetrotting Bond. It's arguably his best outing, so if you liked him here, you'll definitely want to give that one a watch. If you like the henchman here, you should watch the third Bond film, Goldfinger, for arguably the best henchman in the franchise. Odd job. And if you enjoyed the boat chase, you've gotta watch Gator. I think of it every time I see this movie, and it too has some crazy boat stunts. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Live and Let Die? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, which Bond actor has the best introductory movie? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies the way life should be.